If I Ran the Zoo by Dr. Seuss, narrated by me. It's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, and the fellow who runs it seems proud of it, too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes, that's just what I'd do. The lions and tigers and that kind of stuff they have up here now are not quite good enough. You see things like these in just any old zoo. They're awfully old-fashioned. I want something new. So I'd open each cage, I'd unlock every pen, let the animals go and start over again. And somehow or other I think I could find some beasts of a much more unusual kind. A four-footed lion's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet at least. Five legs on the left and five more on the right? Then people will stare and they'll say, what a sight. This zookeeper, new keeper, Gerald's quite keen. That's the gall darndest lion I ever have seen. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people talk. My new zoo, McGruzu, will make people gawk at the strangest odd creatures that ever did walk. I'll get for my zoo a new sort of hen who roosts in another hen's top knot, and then another one roost in the top knot of his, and another in his, and another in his, and so forth and upward and onward, gee whiz. But that's just a start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat, coming into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised, they'll all swallow their gum, they'll ask when they see my strange animals come. Where do you suppose he gets things like that from? His animals all have such very odd faces, I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go places quite out of the way. You have to go places no others can get to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet to. Up past the North Pole where the frozen winds squeal, I'll go and I'll hunt in my Skeagomobile and bring back a family of what do you know. And that's how my new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will grow. I'll hunt in the mountains of Zomba Matant with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant and capture a fine fluffy bird called the Bustard who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard and also a very fine beast called the Flustered who only eats mustard with sauce made of custard. I'll catch him in caves, I'll catch him in brooks, I'll catch him in crannies, I'll catch him in nooks that you don't read about in geography books. I'll catch him in countries that no one can spell, like the country of Modifa Potifa Pell. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, he'll hunt up some beasts that you never saw ever. I'll load up five boats with a family of jotes, whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skin coats and sit down like dogs, but have voices like goats, excepting they can't sing the very high notes. And then I'll go down to the wilds of Nantucket, and capture a family of lunks in a bucket. Then people will say, now I like that boy heaps. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is growing by leaps. He captures them wild, and he captures them meek, he captures them slim, and he captures them sleek. What do you suppose he will capture next week? I'll capture one tiny, I'll capture one cute. I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot. A deer that's so nice he could sleep in your bed, if it weren't for those horns that he has on his head. And speaking of horns that are just a bit queer, I'll bring back a very odd family of deer. 
a father, a mother, two sisters, a brother, whose horns are connected from one to the other, whose horns are so mixed they can't tell them apart, can't tell where they end, and can't tell where they start. Each deer's mighty puzzled, he's never yet found, if his horns are hers or the other way round. I'll capture them fat and I'll capture them scrawny. I'll capture a scragglefoot mulligatawny, a high-stepping animal fast as the wind from the blistering sands of the desert of Zind. This beast is the beast that brave chieftains ride when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. A mulligatawny is fine for my zoo, and so is a chieftain. I'll bring one back too. In the far western part of southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal I call the iota. But I'll capture one who is even much finer in the northeastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will say, Now by thunder, this new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is really a wonder. Most beasts are quite friendly, but still in some lands, some beasts are too dangerous to catch with bare hands. For those that are ugly and vicious and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. It's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it, a hunter can never get bit. A zoo should have bugs, so I'll capture a thwirl whose legs are snarled up in a terrible snarl. And then I'll go out and I'll capture some chugs, some keen shooter, mean shooter, bean shooter bugs. I'll go to the African island of Yurka and bring back a tizzletop tufted mazurka, a kind of canary with quite a tall throat. His neck is so long if he swallows an oat. For breakfast the first day in April, they say, it has to go down such a very long way that it gets to his stomach the 15th of May. I'll bag a big bug who is very surprising, a feller who has a propeller for rising, and zooming around making cross-country hops from Texas to Boston with only two stops. Now that sort of thing for a bug is just tops. And when I've caught him, then the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a wild tic-tac-toe. With X's that win and with zeros that lose, he'll look mighty good in this zoo of McGrew's. I'll bring back a gusset, a gherkin, a gasket, and also a gooch from the wilds of Nantasket. And eight Persian princes will carry the basket, but what their names are, I don't know so don't ask it. In a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called the Natch that no other hunter's been able to catch. He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout, and no one's been able to make him come out. But I'll coax him out with a wonderful meal that's cooked by my cooks in my cookermobile. They'll fix up a dish that's just to his taste, three chicken croquettes made of library paste, then sprinkled with peanut shucks, pickled and spiced, then baked at 600 degrees and then iced. It's mighty hard cooking to cook up such feasts, but that's how the new zoo, Magruzu, gets beasts. I'll go to the faraway mountains of Tobsk, near the river of Nobsk, and I'll bring back an Obsk, a sort of kind of thingamabobsk, who only eats rhubarb and corn on the cobsk. Then people will flock to my zoo in a mobsk. Magru, they will say, does a wonderful jobsk. He hunts with such vim, and he hunts with such vigor. His new zoo, Magruzu, gets bigger and bigger. And speaking of birds, there's the Russian Paluski, whose head ski is red ski and belly is blue ski. I'll get one of them for my Zuski Magruski. Then the whole town will gasp why this boy never sleeps. No keeper before ever kept what he keeps. 
There's no telling what that young fellow will do, and then, just to show them, I'll sail to Catru, and bring back an itkutch, a preep, and a prue, a nurkle, a nerd, and a seersucker, too. I'll hunt in the jungles of Hipponohungus, and bring back a flock of wild Bipponobungus. The Bipponobungus from Hipponohungus are better than those down in Diponodungus and smarter than those out in Nipponongus, and that's why I'll catch em in Hipponohungus, instead of those others in Nungus and Dungus. And people will say when they see those bips bounding, the zookeeper, new keepers, simply astounding. He travels so far that you'd think he would drop. When do you suppose this young fellow will stop? Stop? Well, I should, but I won't stop until I've captured the fizzum a wizzle the world's biggest bird from the island of Guark, who eats only pine needles and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back to my park, the whole world will say, young McGrew's made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses have made him the greatest of all the McGruises. Wow, they'll all cheer, what this zoo must be worth. It's the goldarndest zoo on the face of the earth. Yes, that's what I'd do, said young Gerald McGrew. I'd make a few changes if I ran the zoo. <laughs> <laughs>